Hello, my legends. Welcome to a new issue of Ants Morning, the podcast that used to be only a newsletter and now it's a newsletter and a podcast. <laughs> This one is titled P.S. Die. And um, let me tell you and reassure you um, that's not... Um, for you or anyone else <laughs> specifically i just mm, wrote that sentence on a recent poem that i'm going to um, read you well a bit of it in a moment and i don't know neil hilborn always tells us to um, use and reuse our good sentences uh, because they are ours and That's how people finally know we are smart. So, yeah. Oh, remember on my last issue that was titled Crocodiles and Drawings, I told you about the contest Le Traversal was running on Instagram, so people could vote for their favorite finalist manuscripts, and then the publishing house would give the winner free books. Well, I didn't win, <laughs> but thank you anyway to anyone who voted for my collection. And I'm just taking this chance to say, um, you know, if you ever don't know what to give me as a present, I don't have any Le Traversal books yet. So, hmm. let's go. First section. P.S. Die. I feel like sharing with you the beginning of a poem I wrote for last Neil Hilborn's Writing Circle. Asestina! Oh my god! Um, <laughs> you can look it up on Google uh, or Wikipedia, whatever. Uh, but I'll try to um, explain what it is, uh, more or less, but it's kind of hard, so... <clears throat> I'll do my best. This is the second time I try to write as Estina, and keep in mind English is not my first language and I won't take any grievances about this not being a proper Sestina because it does because it doesn't have um, the proper syllable count or whatever. And well, this is how a Sestina is supposed to be written. Um, the letters indicate the last word of every verse and they have to be repeated throughout the whole piece as um, you can see on the written version on, of the newsletter because I'm not actually um, saying all that now because it's very long. So, <laughs> my Sestina doesn't even have the last uh, envoy and I pulled the first stanza from a Miski song called My Body is Made of Crushed Little Stars. Um, amazing song, by the way. Uh, give it a listen. And clearly formal poems are not my thing. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to read the verses I used from the song um, to create the first stanza for my Sestina. Um, and try to remember the last the last word of each verse because those are the ones that will be repeated on the stanza I wrote myself. Okay, let's go. I'm not doing anything. My body's made of crushed little stars. I want to see the whole world. I don't know how I'm gonna pay rent. I better ace that interview, I should tell them that I'm not afraid to die. Okay, and this is the stanza I wrote for the poem, the first one, and keep in mind the order of the last words I'm repeating is F, A, E, B, D, C, again, if you give the written version a look, um, you will get it far more easily, <laughs> but let me read it. Crest Little Stars, after Mitski. 
best thing to brighten up my CV. I'm a mess. P.S. Die. I want to do all the things I thought I would when they told me I could do anything. My hands are not ready to sit on my lap during a corporate job interview. My body is made of crushed little stars. Celestial bodies are not supposed to worry about paying rent. Celestial bodies should be allowed to relax and engulf the world. Yes, that's how my Sestina starts. Let's continue with the second section. Animal, monster, alien, bitch. Now I wanted to tell you about one of the books I liked the most in 2022, Soft Science by Franny Choi. Um, it wasn't published on 2022, but I read it on 2022. And in a couple of days, I'll share a post on my Patreon about all this. And I already wrote too much there about this poem and this book, so <laughs> now I'm trying to go straight to the point. Throughout this book there are a few poems based on the Turing test, which is basically a conversation a human has with a machine to determine if it has, or if it can emulate at least, having a conscience. And maybe this sounds familiar if you've watched some sci-fi movies or read um, sci-fi books like Blade Runner. And yeah, uh, let me read you the first Turing test format uh, poem in Soft Science because I love it, absolutely. Turing Test by Franny Choi. This is a test to determine if you have consciousness. Do you understand what I am saying? In a bright room, on a bright screen, I watched every mouth, duck, duck, roll. I learned to speak from puppets and smoke, orange worms twisted into the army's alphabet. I cocked the letters as they fell from my mother's lips, whirlpool, sword, wolf, I circled countable nouns in my father's papers, sodium bicarbonate, NBCN1, hippocampus, wasted up, practicing, girl, 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 until our gums softened. Yes, I can speak your language. I broke the horse myself. Where did you come from? Man comes and puts his hands on artifacts in order to contemplate lineage. You start with what you know, hands, hair, bones, sweat, then move toward what you know you are not, animal, monster, alien, bitch. But some of us are born in orbit, so learn to commune with miles of darkness, patterns of dead gods and quiet. Oh, quiet like you wouldn't believe. And this uh, final part of what I read um, gives me that very specific kind of annoyed satisfaction of having just read something so good that pushes so precisely every needed button of my literary pleasure that I wished I've written it myself. And if you, feel like, if you feel like reading everything I've written about this poem and this book, you can always become my Patreon for as little as one euro or one fifty dollars a month. And you'll get all the exclusive content I assert there. Plus, you turn into my tiny scale Medici, my benefactor. You just have to go to patreon.com slash Miriam Navarro Prieto. Third section, brusquely directed upwards. I know I already said this, but let me reiterate. Some descriptions of plants on Wikipedia are pure poetry. Maybe the writer was inspired that day, or botanical lingo is just cool, or they translated the text with Google Translate, I don't know. Okay, here's a fragment I translated myself from the Spanish Wikipedia 
page about this tree, also named Chinese Tuya, Oriental Arbor Vitae, Chinese Arbor Vitae, Biota or Oriental Tuya. And I think my favorite from my favorite from this bunch should be one of the Arbor Vitae, just because it means tree of life. Okay, let me read this translated fragment from Wikipedia. Platicadus orientalis is an evergreen coniferous. Its branches are relatively short, laxly arranged and usually brusquely directed upwards, and the bark, brownies, comes off in narrow vertical strips. Now, tell me if laxly arranged and brusquely directed upwards aren't surprisingly stunning descriptions. I mean, whoever wrote that, um, wow. <laughs> Four, things I've been enjoying. It's been a long time since I last read any book as fast as I just read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Lake Bardugo. Um, I've already watched the Netflix show that mixes the characters of these books with the ones from the Shadow and Bone trilogy. And you're supposed to read the trilogy first, but the Crows uh, story seduced me much more, much more harder. So I started with the duology. And I don't know, if you enjoy stories with a bit of fantasy and watching rich people suffer, well, um, <laughs> I mean, the best thing about these books is the found family the protagonists build, and as Tumblr user The Corpse Witch says, there are six emotionally unstable teenagers who don't know how to say I love you and what's not to like there, right? Finally, let me close off this with a thank you to my newsletter subscribers and my podcast readers who still read and listen to my stuff despite my intense rambling. And a special, special thank you to my Patreons who are the very, very best ever and ever. Larry, Jorge, Rufi, Lucia, Chelsea, Kat Dufou, Katia, Ariadna y Manuel. And Manuel. You know, I'm Spanish and I forget that you're supposed to say and instead of e. Forgive me. So, <laughs> if you haven't subscribed to this newsletter podcast yet, you can go to tinyletter.com slash Miriam dash Navarro dash Prieto and type your email address on the little uh, square you'll see there and remember to wait for the email tiny letter will send you to click on the confirmation link you'll find inside um, oh would you like to take a peek into the previous issues so you have a, an idea of what I do here you can just have a look at my archive um, it's on the address I just told you, um, but there's a, there's a tiny link that says something like um, read letter archive, I think. Oh, do you like what I have to say and you think someone you like might like it also? Well, entice them with the strangely sexy poem about love making snails I served on a previous issue called green slack love and then tell them to subscribe let me say goodbye uh, by telling you this um, tiny confession lately i got a whole streak of gray hairs on my head and i can't help remind uh, reminding myself of butch uh, that character from the tv series recess he was a telltale bastard, okay, but what an immaculate style he had. And oh, that very, very bisexual dilemma of not knowing if you like a person or if you just want to be like them. Ah. 
Ok, see you soon. Hasta pronto.